Um, one of the biggest improvements in the five game point streak has been third down defense. What can you attribute that to? Did you guys change anything in practice? We, you know, after the uh, Ohio game, especially in the in in the Virginia game, both sides of the ball. You know, we knew that uh, we had to improve on third down, whether it was on offense or defense. So we, we did just put a bigger emphasis on understanding uh, the yardage needed. We call it the sticks. You know, seeing the sticks and making sure you understand what the team needs, understand the scheme that you're in. We, we, we made a bigger emphasis probably during the week of watching more third down tape cut-ups and, and making sure that guys are and, and along with the red area too because we had to improve in the red area on both sides of the ball too so you know I, I think at the end of the day it's about emphasis and that's really what we try to do is maybe just emphasize it a little bit more Bill I know there's 12 one game seasons but they've been one of the flagships in the league can you put in perspective what this game means to your program at this point and whether it has any uh, recruiting uh, implications well, I think uh, you're right. It, you know, like you said, it's 12 one-game seasons, and this is this is a big game. I mean, you know, for me to sit up here and say it's not a big game, you know, that's crazy. I mean, this is Ohio State, uh, great tradition, uh, great players, great head coach, great coaching staff. So, you know, it's a, it's a big game. You know, at the end of the day, recruiting is about the fit. You know, what's the fit? And uh, there, there's differences between. Ohio State and Penn State, you know, the setting of the school, the, uh, the coaching staffs, the, you know, just there's a lot of, there's differences, just like there is with any school. And, and every school's great, in my opinion. You know, we don't, we don't go out there and do anything but talk about Penn State when we recruit. So, uh, you know, so recruiting at the end of the day, to me, is more about a fit. And uh, it's not all about just winning the game, and that's how you're going to beat uh, them in recruiting. To me, that's not really what it's all about. And so, but as far as playing football goes, this is a great college football game in what will be a great college football atmosphere against a team that has this, you know, the same type of tradition and history as Penn State. So to me, this is what college football is all about, the game itself. Coach, following up on Mark's question a little bit with Braxton Miller, can you talk about you know, the, the pressure that he'll put on your defensive ends to try to keep them you know, contained and how you deal with that? Yeah, it's di very difficult. Uh, very, very difficult. You have to do the best you can in practice to try to give them a picture of that, which obviously the picture of practice won't be anything like what it is on Saturday night, but at least you give them, try to give them a picture. Uh, in, in many ways, your defensive ends, excuse me, your defensive tackles, they, they have to be very disciplined in how they rush the pass, uh, whether it's a four-man rush or five-man rush or, or a twist rush or whatever it is, they have to be very, very disciplined in how they rush the passer. And if they can do that, then they have a chance. But again, at the end of the day, this guy's going to make plays, and you know we're not going to shut this guy down totally. I mean, this this is a this is an excellent football player, and uh, we just have to make sure that uh, we show up and do the best we can on Saturday night. Well, some some of your guys over Twitter are wishing you happy birthday. Any, any special plans today? Uh, <laughs> I. I actually, I, I don't know, I, I'm not a big birthday guy. Uh, I'm not a, my wife will list all the things that I really don't enjoy. Birthdays, weddings, theme parks, <laughs> the beach. I'm not a big beach guy, you know, I love Cape Cod, but it's really a five o'clock at night. Uh, but no, I found out it was my uh, birthday when my brother, my older brother texted me. He said, uh, happy birthday. And I, that's when I figured it was my birthday, so. I, but thank you. But there's no special plans. And one, one of the things I've heard a lot from your players over the streak is how much fun they're having, just simply how much fun they're having. After what they went through in the offseason, I guess, how important was it to sort of instill that attitude again with these guys, just simply having fun with the ball? Well, winning is fun. And so winning, winning like, like we said a lot of times, you know, winning, winning cures a lot of ills. You know, and, and it's fun to win. You know, that locker room, after some of these wins, it's been some of the most memorable post-game locker rooms in my career. And I, you know, I've been in AFC Championship winning locker rooms and things like that, so that's saying a lot. And, and so what we try to do, too, is, you know, football, especially as you get into the mid-season, football can be somewhat practice, especially some drudgery, you know. There, it's just, and so, you know, you try to change it up a little bit and make fo football practice competitive. And, maybe blast the music a little bit and, and, and do
do some things to do the best you can to make it fun, but at the same time get your work done. So hopefully we've done a good job of that. And, and, and I'm, I'd say this too, it's been a lot of fun coaching this team. Like I always say, no matter what happens, this is a great group of kids that come to practice every day. It's been fun to go out to practice every day. Coach, uh, Urban Meyer said yesterday that Beaver Stadium was allowed, he was told by his other coaches, it was a lot of stadium in the Big Ten, and um, you were saying earlier how it was a special place to play. Can you talk about the atmosphere for Saturday and how important it is for our fans that are lined up already for Saturday? This is, uh, without a doubt, the best college football environment in the country. I mean, it, there's just absolutely no doubt about it. And uh, obviously I'm very biased, but having been here now for a certain amount of home games and, and watching that student body and listening to our fans and knowing that there's uh, 108,000 people going to be here Saturday night, I mean, this place is going to be loud and uh, everybody's going to be wearing white. And the other thing about our fans, which I like, is they're very respectful, I think. They're loud. They cheer for their team. But that's what needs to continue here. They need to be very respectful because this is an excellent Ohio State team coming in here. But I just, and our team just really wants them to show up early, be in there for warm-ups. You know, it really gets our guys jazzed up when, when they're in there for warm-ups. I mean, our guys, they love that. And uh, so if we can get them out of the tailgate maybe a little bit early and uh, get, them, get them into the stadium early and maybe get 100,000, 108,000 in there for warm-ups, boy, that'd be pretty neat. That'd be pretty neat. So. It's a very, very special environment. It meant a lot to us in the Northwestern game, and I'm really looking forward to, to leading the team out there on Saturday night. Bill, as a first-year head coach, did you think that you might have a little bit of an element of surprise in <coughs> some of these teams that you hadn't played? And then now that we're halfway through the season, you think that some teams maybe have some film on you and might be able to figure some things out as opposed to that element? I sh I, you know, sure, any time you have a new coaching staff where they're, you know, what film do you watch? Do you watch New England film? Do you watch Auburn film? Do you watch South Carolina film? Yeah, I'm sure there's some some, some of that, you know, as, a, as an opposing. I've been on those type of staffs where you have to try to figure out who's, where they're coming from. And that's not easy. So, yeah, there's probably some of that. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think we do anything that's really that complicated. I really don't. I think we just try to play hard and uh, compete and, uh, you know, I'm sure guys figured stuff out right after the Ohio game. We just need to keep competing and playing hard and, and uh, you know, not turning it over, don't commit penalties, <coughs> do the best you can on special teams, and, and hopefully we can continue to play well. Uh, Bill, with the NASCAR offense, how tough is it for you to have to come up with a play in, in such a short period of time after you've run the previous play? And what are some kind of factors that kind of go through your head when you're evaluating uh, what play you need to call? Uh, well, number one is you try to, you, you do get into a certain rhythm. So, you know, one of the things that any coach will tell you that runs that, you know, that type of tempo offense is first down is really important because if you can gain positive yards on first down, then your second and medium call or your second and short call, you can really call whatever you want. That's a play caller's dream. And so that's really the most important thing because once you get a, a, a good gain on first down, right away you're into a play calling rhythm. And after that, for anybody that's called plays, that's really what it's all about and, and it's not that difficult. But as far as what I'm looking for and all those things, I mean, I'm not telling you. <laughs> Bill. What do you think the guys who left the program are missing out on, and what do you think guys considering leaving the program are going to miss out on in the future? Well, I think it's a fair question, Guy. I really do. But again, I'm, I'm just here to talk about our football team and, and playing Ohio State. And again, I've really enjoyed coaching these kids that stuck with us. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's a great group of guys. It's a, it's, a, it's a group of guys that have, you know, obviously been through a lot, but uh, have played extremely hard. and. and and are reaping some of the rewards of all the hard work that they've put in to, to, uh, to playing here at Penn State. So and at the end of the day, like I always say, I think this is a very special place to play college football because you can earn a phenomenal world-renowned degree. You can choose from 100 plus different majors and, and, and your degree can take you anywhere in the world in any occupation, any graduate school. And then on top of that, you get to play uh, football in front of 108,000 fans on national TV every week. So, to me, it's a, it's a very special place to play football. Yeah, Bill, on the flip side of guys' question, for the kids that did stay, and, you know, after the way you started this year on to 
does it make you feel good that they're going to have the opportunity that they're going to have on Saturday night in front of all these fans to play an undefeated Ohio State team? I would definitely say that uh, these guys have earned the right to play in, a, in this type of game. They've, uh, they've, they've, they've put a lot of time in. Uh, they've been through a lot. They've done it. Everything that we've asked them to do, they've done. You know, be on time, practice hard, lift hard, run hard, compete. They've, had, they've done it. And uh, so they, they've definitely earned the right to play in, in, in this type of a game in, in front of 108,000 fans. And, and I really, you know, and I obviously expect 108,000 fans there, and, and I think our fans will, will be very, very supportive of our team on Saturday night. Bill, uh, can you describe kind of the evolution of this NASCAR offense and, and where it might be headed? Is the end goal to have it to use it every time you have a box nonstop? Well, we, you know, I, I was just saying to the staff earlier, you know, I, I, sometimes I have some deja vu moments, you know, where I'm sitting there and I'm, we're game planning and I think about, well, I remember in 2000 at Georgia Tech, we, we did things with George Gotts, who was our quarterback, that are similar to this. So, you know, I can tell you that when I worked for Mark Whipple at Brown, you know, I, we did, we ran no huddle. You know what I mean? When I, when I worked for uh, George O'Leary at Georgia Tech, we, we did this. Like, we, when I worked for Ralph Friedrich, he was the offensive coordinator at Georgia Tech, we ran a wishbone no huddle. I mean, that was awesome. We were in a wishbone no huddle. If you know anything about football, like, that was pretty cool. So we've been doing this for a while. It's not like we didn't, n none of us invented it. You know, it's just, I mean, if you want to say who invented it, you'd have to go all the way back to Paul Brown. He, he invented the shotgun and the no huddle and the two minute offense. So, um, you know, we've been doing it for a while. Now, when we got to New England, when I got to New England, they, they really had been doing it for a long time. Like, everybody writes that New England has just been doing this this year. New England's been doing this since Bill Belichick was the head football coach there. And uh, in some way, shape, or form. I can remember before I even got there in 2006, they're playing the Indianapolis Colts. They opened up in a no huddle empty series, but right down the field. In, in, in I think it was 06 before I got there. So, you know, these things have been going on. And so it's just really more of a huddle on the ball. It's just about communication, understanding substitutions, and, and uh, it's really not that big of a deal, is what I'm trying to say. It's been going on for a long time. Hey, Coach, uh, right now. I'm just wondering about the relationship between uh, Gerald Hodges and Mike Maddy that you've noticed. Um, Jordan Hill said after the game, we'll sit there and compare statistics and whatnot. Um, do you think they have a little bit of like a rivalry with each other to see who be the best? Well, I think they, they really enjoy playing with each other. Uh, and you can see that when, when each guy, just like all, the, all, all those guys on defense. What, what I love about our defense is, is that they play extremely hard. It's not always pretty. But they, they compete. They play extremely hard, which is the number one thing in, in defensive football. And then what I like is when they do make a play, they, they, they are all around each other. You know, they really are. And, and that's what you see, like, with Gerald and Mike. You know, Mike makes a play. Gerald's jumping on his back, celebrating with him. Same thing. Uh, Gerald makes a play. Michael's right there with him. So I, as far as comparing stats and all that, I mean, you know, like I always say, stats are for you know what. So, you know, you don't. I mean, this is about playing good defensive football and doing the best you can to try to win a game.